You guys probably forgot that I even do film reviews, and I'm gonna be honest, I did too. Again, I've said this plenty of times before, but the film industry was really messed up by COVID. Only now are theaters slowly starting to reopen. And personally, my only real way of watching films these days has been Disney+, Plus. so because of that, most of my viewing has been Disney films. Regardless, I thought I'd bring you a belated film review now. I wasn't sure if I was gonna talk about this movie because it is about three months old now, but since it finally went free on Disney Plus and doesn't have that premier access tag on it anymore, I thought I could talk about it. So welcome back to another unscripted film review, and as you can tell from the title, today I'm going to be talking about the latest Walt Disney Animation Studios film, Raya and the Last Dragon. This is Walt Disney Animation Studios 59th animated film. For those who may forget, Walt Disney Animation Studios was on a very torrid pace throughout the 2010s. After a weak run in the 2000s that saw them phase out 2D animation and also put out a number of box office flops. The 2010s saw them releasing several critical and commercial successes like Tangled, Winnie the Pooh, Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Moana, several of which were fantastic films that were putting them right in the same category as their brothers next door at Pixar. Disney and Pixar were really dominating the animated world in the 2010s, unsurprisingly, and near the end of the decade they started to get a little bit sequel happy. Walt Disney Animation Studios generally didn't really release a whole lot of sequels, but at the end of the 2010s they released Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2, as well as Frozen 2, and Pixar was also having some fun with the sequels in Finding Dory, Cars 3, Incredibles 2, Toy Story 4. But coming into the new decade, it seems like both of them have been focusing their attention back on original properties. Last year, Pixar released both Onward and Soul, and now Disney is back with Raya, and for the rest of the year it looks like that's going to continue, with Pixar releasing Luca in a few weeks, and Disney releasing in Kanto later in November. Now this movie in particular also had a slightly rocky road to release. Originally it was going to come out in November of 2020, however, as I made clear earlier, COVID really affected the film industry in more ways than one. So Raya had to be moved to March, and it was released both theatrically and on Disney Plus with a $30 premiere access tag on it. The reason I'm only just talking about it now is because just this weekend it finally had that premiere access tag taken off and it's free to watch on Disney+. Plus. Now while I haven't seen every single Walt Disney Animation Studios movie, I do love their films and I do look forward to new films when they put them out. I loved Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Moana, and obviously when we go back to the classics, Disney has made some of my favorite animated films of all time. So naturally I was excited for whatever they were able to put out next. Raya was starting to get its trailers and I was just hoping that it was going to be another classic from Disney. As it turns out, I wouldn't exactly see say it's a classic, though I did still enjoy myself with the movie. For a brief rundown of the plot, Raya and the Last Dragon takes place in the fictional land of Kumandra, a land that is being ravaged by an evil spirit known as the Droon. Kumandra has dragons that kind of serve to protect it, and Sisu is the last dragon. She uses a powerful gem to banish the Droon, but at the same time, while reviving Kumandra's people, is unable to keep the dragons alive. There ends up being a big power struggle for the orb that divides Kumandra into five tribes, and Raya, who belongs to the Heart Tribe, gets to become a guardian of the gem. Her father, Chief Benja, thinks that the tribes are finally ready to reconcile, but while they are reconciling, one of the tribes tries to steal the gem, which leads to a fight, and it leads to it being broken into five pieces. And while each tribe takes a piece of the gem, the Droon ends up being reawakened, once again turning several people into stone. Now, six years later, Raya is on a quest to get all the pieces of the gem, back so that she could reawaken her father who was turned to stone, and in the process she even reawakens Sisu, the last dragon, who helps her on her quest to retrieve these gems. In general, I would say the story focuses on a lot of different themes like trust, and trust, and also trust, and did I say trust? Yeah, that is one thing the movie makes abundantly clear that it is about trust. I get why, and it's a good theme to have in a story like this. In a way, it's themes of trust and togetherness kind of feel real in the world that we're living in now, but just know the movie is a little bit overt about it. The story works well in the Disney formula, but I have to say, I'm not sure what it is, but I don't think the writing in this movie is quite as tight as some of Disney's bests. I'm not sure if it's because the plot can be pretty predictable at points, or maybe because the movie's attempts at humor sometimes tend to fall flat on their face, but I don't think the writing in this grabbed me quite as much as some of Disney's best works. I did love the 
world of Kumandra, and I thought that there was a great level of diversity between the five tribes, but the overarching plot structure just didn't feel quite as strong to me. And while I did like the characters, I don't think that they were some of Disney's best either. I think Raya herself is a great protagonist. She's very complex, very courageous and strong. I like how she succeeds as being a protagonist that's just a normal person. She doesn't really have a ton of powers, but she still has a lot of strength. Sisu the Last Dragon is another solid character, though I think when I mentioned the attempts at humor falling on their face, I think that Sisu is kind of a perfect example of that. There is the occasional funny quip. I like the joke that Sisu makes about being the one person who turned in the group project that they did no work on. And I think the character is very sweet and nice, but I was just kind of waiting for something a little bit funnier to happen with a lot of the jokes. And there are a few other nice additions to the roster too. I think that Boone is very charismatic, Tong is a likable character, and Namari is someone who has her own complexities as well. And much like a number of recent Disney movies, there is a comedic animal side character in Tuk Tuk, a mix of an armadillo and a pill bug. Not surprising there was a character like this. We had Sven and Frozen and Hey Hey and Moana. Now we have Tuk Tuk. Again, I did think Tuk Tuk was pretty adorable. He had some moments that I really enjoyed and I thought he worked as a comic relief character. But once again, while the characters are nice and they are likable and I did find myself rooting for them and hoping that they succeeded, I just didn't find them quite as immediate or memorable as some of Disney's bests. They definitely still worked and I think that they were well written. It just kind of felt like for some reason they didn't pop in the same way that some of Disney's best characters do. As far as the voice acting, I know there was a bit of controversy before the movie came out about the lack of Southeast Asian casting in the film. And while that's not something you would probably immediately notice when watching the movie, I do think it is a valid thing to criticize. After all, Kumandra is said to be very heavily inspired by Southeast Asia. You would think the casting would reflect that a little bit more, especially when you consider that most of the cast members that are Southeast Asian are just extras or background characters. It doesn't kill the movie, it's just a slight disappointment, and I think it is a valid thing to be concerned about. In terms of the voice acting itself, though, I think it is very solid. I like the chemistry of Kelly Marie Tran as Raya and Aquafina as Sisu. Even though I mentioned that Sisu is not as funny as I'm sure they wanted the character to be, Aquafina really sells the role. She makes you think this character is going to be hilarious and she does a great job with it. I also liked Isaac Wong as Boone and Gemma Chen as Namari. Especially love Benedict Wong as Tong. Beyond that humor, the movie is very action focused, but I do think the action set pieces really work. They're exciting. I think the fight scenes are very cool. And visually, of course, the movie is an absolute treat. We know by now that Disney has incredible animation with their films, and this is just another example. It just bursts at the seam with bold colors, excellent attention to detail, the character designs are stunning, I especially love the design on Sisu. I mean, excellent animation is to be expected from a film like this, and it does not disappoint. So all in all, I think that Raya and the Last Dragon, while not quite as strong as some of Disney's bests, is another solid entry in their canon. While it can be a little bit predictable, and I feel like it wanted to be a bit funnier than it was, the movie still succeeds on the strength of its thrilling action set pieces, beautiful animation, solid characters even if they aren't some of Disney's bests, and nice overall voice work by the cast. Once again, it's the type of movie that pretty much works firmly in the established Disney formula, maybe a little bit darker than some other previous films, but I think it does a nice job with the formula overall. It might not be a wholly new classic, but it's still a very entertaining film for kids and adults alike, and now that it's finally free on Disney+, Plus, I can't see any reason not to watch the movie. Don't expect it to be the most mind-blowing experience you've ever had, but if you're looking for a nice, fun Disney film, this is going to deliver that. Overall, my rating scale, I'm definitely going to say that Raya and the Last Dragon is going to get a good rating from me. Again, not an excellent, it's definitely not one of my favorite Disney films, but I did enjoy myself with it. I think there's a lot of fun to be had with the movie, and if you like Disney's animated films, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one quite a bit. Another job well done by Disney. But that's just my opinion on the movie. What did you guys think about it? Did you love it even more than I did? Did you hate it way more than I did? Are you just completely indifferent towards it? And where would you rank it among Walt Disney Animation Studios' movies? Again, you don't have to rank all 59 of them, but would you say it's like a top tier movie, a low tier movie, a mid tier movie? Whatever your thoughts and opinions are, leave them down in the comments below. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe and support some of my other ventures that I have linked down in the description, thank you. If not, it's no big deal. I totally understand. I don't know how much more frequently film reviews are going to be happening from here on out. Obviously, theaters are starting to slowly reopen, so hopefully I will be able to see more films. Continuing with the Disney thing, Luke
Luca is releasing in a couple weeks, and of course I love Pixar, so I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Again, hopefully as movie theaters start to gradually reopen, there will be more movies that'll catch my eye that I'll want to watch, and then I'll be able to do more of these videos. So stay tuned for that, but until next time, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.